Hi, this is Eric with Cat Avenue. Today I'm going to be walking you through a 2D drawing in Elevation View uh, based on the 3D drawing that we did in Part 1. I'll leave the links to those videos at the bottom of this video, so check those out. So let's get started. Before we do that, let's have a look at our object snap settings. Right click on the icon there, choose eSnap. Oh, we've got endpoint, perpendicular, quadrant, center, and midpoint selected. We also have uh, our ortho view turned off, so we need to turn that on. That's going to keep all the lines straight. Click on ortho piping. For the size, we're going to choose a 3 inch butt welded carbon steel. So let's start out by selecting the straight piece of pipe. You draw, choose this icon here, pick a point, and then point your cursor into the direction of flow and type in one foot. So that places a one foot piece of pipe here. Um, zoom out a little bit. So let's choose the flange next, which is this icon. We've got a weld neck flange selected here in the drop down. Uh, we'll choose this one. Now these are clickable, so this is showing the insert point. Here you can see the X here it basically says we can press enter to choose that last point. So that's what we're going to do and then we rotate that in. We'll put a reducing T in and then we'll choose 3 to 2 select that one snap to the endpoint there of our center line say no to 45 and then rotate this in Uh, we're going to do a reducer, which is this one, 3 to 2 again, we're choosing this one, the concentric. We're pressing enter to choose our last point, pointing the cursor in the direction and clicking. So now we got a reducer in there. Let's go ahead and choose the straight piece again this one. At this point I'm going to uh, pan over. I'm holding my uh, scroll wheel on my mouse and I'm, I'm just pushing it down and dragging it over. If you don't have a scroll wheel you can do a command uh, left click and left hold I should say your mouse. It's a shortcut. So let's continue on. Um, the first point is going to be here on our straight piece. We're going to be going over a foot. Type in one foot. And then we're going to be going down six inches. And then we're going to press enter to complete the run. So now we can put another straight piece here. And I'm going to use my um, object snap tracking. I'm going to show you how to uh, set that up at the end of this video and kind of discuss that a little bit more. Uh, so let's pick the straight piece. I'm going to click here, snap to the uh, midpoint there. And now I'm going to uh, use that object snap tracking, find out the point here. You can see the dashed line as I'm moving across and then just left clicking. So I'm projecting that point over um, kind of transparently uh, in the middle of a command which is useful because now that these two pieces of pipe are aligned with each other. And now I can simply put my flanges on the bottom there of those. Okay. 
let's just press enter rotate that in and we'll do one more I did that wrong so I'm going to redo it again And now we can exit. So next let's set our dim scale because we're gonna start placing bubbles on this. So we'll type in dim scale. I'm gonna set it to four. And let's check out our layout. So here, if we type in MS for model space, we can set this to three inches equals a foot. Again, I'm just kind of panning over here. Uh, these grids can be turned off. So if you type grid and then type off, you can see our drawing a little bit better. We're going to put our schedule over the top of this. So let's go back into model space. And we'll go into the piping again. We're going to go into the options menu, bill of materials configuration. We've got this turned on. And now we're ready to create our bill of materials. We're going to click the BOM button there. Um, if you want to change any of these things and if they're grayed out, you can reset the table so that they go, uh, so it releases some of these values. Um, but everything looks good, so we don't need to do that. Um, let's go ahead and create the bill of materials here. Again, just like the last video, um, it's basically telling you what's going to be bubbled. Um, so here we have a pipe here, and here the rubber band line is coming from that pipe. So let's place the first point of our leader here, and then the ending point here, and then press enter. Again, let's do the same thing for this pipe. And for this one, we could go up with it. Now we have the pipe on this side. So let's use the object step tracking to find and align this a little bit better. So if we just hover over this and then come over, we can align that bubble better here, hover over this a little bit, and then come over with the, the line. This is our T. And this is our reducer. Let's label that here. I'm almost done here. Let's do the flange. And the other flange here. And this flange. And now it wants our table to be inserted. So let's just place it up here for now. And 
Now, just like the last video, we can go ahead and move this table, or I should say cut it. And then go into paper space and then paste it up here. So let's go ahead and size this table so that it fits on our sheet. Um, I'm going to select the whole table, type in scale. Our base point could be here. And then we have a reference option, so I'm going to type R for reference. I didn't do this in the last video, but I wanted to show you this. So we'll place our first reference point here, our second one at the end of the table. And this way we can size it in this way so that it scales properly to our paper. And then we can move this down. And we can move this down into our sheet here. So this table is sitting directly on top of paper Whereas this model is basically, type in MS for model space, is peering down into our uh, model space here. So hopefully that makes sense. And if it doesn't, I have a video on that whole concept of paper space and model space. I'll leave a link below to that. Type in PS for paper space again. Um, so that kind of completes the drawing. And a couple things I wanted to show you. Um, the first was how did I change the color of this table so that it's all black? Um, so if you go into MetQ and you go into Bill of Materials, and you go into Layers. Um, I changed these colors to be all white. Now by default they're yellow. Um, so you'll have to go into each of these and change them to white. And then if you type in LA for layer, uh, this text layer should also be white. You can change that just by going in here and, and selecting the color. You could do the same thing to the uh, you know to the uh, piping color. Let's go ahead and change that to a dark green. You see the way I've changed that so now the pipe is is green. That's that's how you would go about doing that. And you can also see that um, the uh, line type scale is a little bit off. So let's type in MS again for model space, LT scale. And we can fiddle with this number. We could say a 0.5, which would clarify this drawing a little bit better. If we go in and type plot, We just choose preview here to see our final result. So just wanted to show you that. Um, hopefully that helps. Um, now let's get into um, this other setting that I was talking about. So if you go into eSnap settings Entity snap tracking is turned on. And the same thing with e track point. Um, I think this is important when you're aligning things and you're drawing like I was doing with the bubbles and even the pipe. So, to explain that a little bit further, if we had, just to say, we had a line here. So, let's say if I wanted to draw, for example, a circle, but I wanted the circle to be aligned with the midpoint of this line and also aligned with the endpoint of this line. 
So I want to place my circle right there, but I don't want to draw any construction lines. So if you type in C for circle, and then hover over the midpoint of this line, see how it's drawing that construction line in for you? And then coming down to this one, and, and then also hovering and then coming down, it's basically finding the intersection of those two points without you having to do anything, uh, no construction lines. So now I know that this circle is properly aligned with the midpoint of this line and the end point of this line. So I was doing exactly the same thing with these bubbles down here. Um, kind of like if this bubble were up here, how would I align this bubble? Well, the way you do that is with O snap tracking. So move, removing it from the center here. But we want to reference this one. And then slowly slide this over here like this. And then these two bubbles are aligned. So hopefully that clears up how you would use that feature. And I hope this video has been helpful. And as always, feel free to email or call me. Number here is 888-271-7121. Thanks and have a great day. Bye.